Grab your Bibles. We're going to say it like we mean it. It's Father's Day, so it's an extra umph in there. So I want to hear you loud and clear, man. Let's go. This is my Bible. This is God speaking to me. My eyes are open. My heart is prepared to receive all of God's promises and instructions. Today, authority in my life so that in every circumstance, in others, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so if you need bulletins, grab a bulletin. Ushers to get you a bulletin. If you need one, raise your hands. You need a pen. Take notes on your phone. This message is for everyone, but specifically to the fathers. So happy Father's Day again. Um, we appreciate each and every man. Big time. Big time. Your task is not easy. You know, I was... Um, I was preparing a, a Father's Day card for my father, and as I was preparing it, the Lord just put it on my heart that I didn't, I didn't really know what to say, but the Lord put it in my heart to just thank him for being a, playing a, a, an important role in my life, because I, I realized he was, the, he was a child, uh, he was the one of nine or ten children in Cleveland, Ohio, in the ghetto when he was born. And when he had us, he didn't have any direction. He didn't have any guidance because his father was old. His father was a, an old uh, great-grandfather. I called him Bobo. Uh, and he gave me my first 10-speed bike. But he didn't teach him how to be a man. He didn't teach him how to be a father, how to raise children. So when he had my sister and myself, I mean, he had my sister and I, what have you, um, he really didn't know what to do. And as I got older, I realized I needed to just be, I needed to appreciate him because he did the best with what he knew and what he had. So I wrote and said, Pops, because I call him Pops, I appreciate the role that you play in my life. Happy Father's Day, I love you. So I want to encourage you that, you know, mothers and fathers are not perfect. You know, they do, it the, best, they do the best they can with what they have, with what they know. Now, if they know Christ and they have Christ in their life, then praise God, because, you know, God forgives them if they make a mistake. So if God can forgive, we can forgive. Yeah. So, and I, and, and growing up, you know, I, I called my father and I said, Pops, you know, I, I forgive you. You know, I don't know what was going on when you had me, you know, what was going on in your life with my mother. I don't hate you guys. You know, you haven't played, a specific, you haven't really been there for me, but the role that you played and the time that you played it, I appreciate you. And he don't really cry, but he almost cried then. And I almost cried when I made, wrote that card, so. Whew. All right, let's roll here. So it's only fitting that we honor and say thank you to our Heavenly Father. That we say thank you, Father, for being the Heavenly Father for us. I may not have an earthly father, but I have a father in you, so I thank you. You know, we need more fathers in this world because it's one thing to say you're a father, but it's another thing to be a father. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So today, I'm, I changed it up a little. I'm putting a little twist to it. Uh, father's Day is a day we typically honor fathers, which we're going to honor fathers. But um, typically, we, you know, we, we honor fathers by saying what we're going to do for them, what gifts to buy them, you know, uh, how to honor them. You know, the list goes on. And sometimes we go, man, we... I honor my father. Well, I got to hear it on Father's Day. I'm going to honor him again. You know, honor, honor, honor. But we should always give thanks and praise to our earthly father. Um, and just like Mother's Day or mothers, we should honor mothers every day, not just on Mother's Day. And that goes for the same for the fathers. So honor your father. But today I want to speak to the fathers and the young fathers, or the young fathers may be in here, but the fathers or the young men that will one day be a father. I want to speak to you guys and, 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 and share with you how important it is to prioritize your time with God. And by prioritizing your time with God, getting to a place where you rest so you can hear from God. You know, that's important, resting in the Father. You know, there's nothing wrong. When I say prioritizing, I mean there's nothing wrong with backing up, taking some, some time to breathe, to relax from the hustle and bustle, the daily grind, being everything to everyone all the time, holding it down. 
it's tough being a father, but at the same time, it's rewarding. But it's important that we stop from all the motions and take some time so we can hear from the Father, our Heavenly Father. So taking time to rest in the Lord, being still in Him, the one who will rejuvenate us, reignite us, refuel us, retool us, equip us, hydrate us. That's important. We need those things. You know, Jason talked about it last week, about being hydrated. When, we get, when we're dehydrated, all H breaks loose. You know, things come out of our mouth. We have attitudes. We, we have, you know, we're arguing with our wife, our kids, nobody listening. We're working hard. Nobody's paying us respect. I'm a man. You don't respect me. You know, but how are we acting? Are we being hydrated, hydrated by the word of God? Are we praying and sitting down and resting in his word? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. So this time I'm going to spend with the fathers, talking to the fathers, it's important. So ladies, with your permission, I like to rap talk with the guys. You, you know, there's going to be something here for you guys also, because this message is going to be for you also. This message is going to show you, encourage you how to encourage them to spend the necessary time with God, how to prioritize their time with God. Ain't nothing wrong with you encouraging your man, is it? Can I, hey, ladies? Amen. Amen. Exactly. You know, think of this. Fathers are like cement in a brick wall. They get overlooked, but they, hit, but they hold everything together. Look at that cement. You don't think about that cement holding the brick. You just see the brick. But who's holding it together? The father. The behind-the-scenes cat. That's, you know, that's got to, again, be that father to everyone. To be the, the, the husband to, the best husband to his best wife. That takes a lot. So think of your fathers as that cement holding things together. Amen. This role as fathers, this position we hold, requires a lot of time, effort, and patience. You know, it's not easy being a father. And, 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 and imagine, real fathers do cry. They may not cry in the public, but I can tell you, we cry in the dark. You know, we're, we're, we're sensitive too. I mean, we may not show it. I'm sensitive. You know that. You know that. I'm a sensitive kind of guy. Ain't nothing wrong with doing that or being that. You know, <laughs> I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive. <laughs> Don't hurt my feelings. Our role as a father plays a pivotal part in the family structure. The success of the father determines the success of the family. You know, Pastor Ed used to say, if we can... If we can help the fathers, we can help the family. So if we can help the fathers out there today, we can, build, we can rebuild the structure that God set up, that God designed from top to bottom. That's, the, that's God's design, the man to lead. Not, not lead, you know, begrudgingly, not lead because he has to. Lead because God has called him to lead his family. That is the structure that God designed for us. Amen? I said this last time, but I'm going to use it differently. Fathers, to whom much is given, much is required. In order to perform this role effectively, in order to take these responsibilities on, to guide, guard, and govern our families, we can't do it alone. We need the Father's help. We need to walk in the park with our Father. We need that kind of Starbucks time to be able to walk and talk and rap with our Father. You know, Father, I don't have it together. You know, I yelled at my, my wife earlier today. The kids got on my nerves. You know, I'm trying to provide for them, but I just feel there's too much on me. Help me be the best father I can be to my, my, my family. Help me, Father. That kind of time you need with your father, amen? amen? A father needs to lean on something other than themselves. We can't go to ourselves on how to be a father. I can't teach myself how to be the father of my family. I can't do that. I've not been on this earth long enough. I'm not that wise. And I don't have that kind of insight. We need to go to our fathers to ask the questions that we have to keep us going. You know, funny enough, we don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I may act like it, but I don't have all the answers, believe it or not. 
you know. Why you got to put me on the spot like that? All right, let me get back to my message here. Let's get going here. If you leave it up to us as fathers, we would, when things get tough in our marriage, we would walk away. We would leave. We would give up. We would not hang in there. I've done it myself. You know, there's been times I've wanted to get up, give up in my marriage and my family. But that's not something that fathers who are Christians do. When we know Christ, we don't give up on our families. We don't give up on our kids. We don't give up on ourselves. So we need to prioritize that time with our father. Amen? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. And sometimes we get a going. We don't stick around. Amen? This walking away is one of the main reasons we don't have fathers at home today. They've decided to walk away. For whatever reason or, way, reason or another, they've walked away from the responsibilities. They, won't ta- they were not taught by their father to stick it out. To say, hold on. Maybe you need a break, but come back home. Don't leave. Don't leave this family that you've started, that you have, that God has blessed you with. These kids that God has blessed you, blessed you with. Don't walk away. Don't drop the mic and say, I'm done. Because he's never done. So Christian fathers that are believers in Christ, we don't walk away. Now I was reading Maximize Manhood, and it talked about how fathers, some that are Christians, how we give up, how we walk away, how we've checked out. I mean, we may be there physically. I mean, we may be there physically, but we're not there spiritually because we're not going to our father spiritually. At first, when I read that in our men's group a few years ago, and I think Pastor Ron was with us on that. I, I felt kind of hurt. I was like, what? You know, I don't, never, I don't give up. I know the word. I'm staying, you know. But when I was put to the test, believe me, as a Christian man, I wanted to leave. Amen. Keep it real. I wanted to walk out. I wanted to get the, out of there. Because it was just too much pressure. Plus, especially, it was new to me. I was a new, I mean, I don't think I got, I got married at 33. I mean, I already had a son in London. I already been around the world. I'm like, What? You doing this to me now? I don't have time for this. That's how I, that's how, because I didn't have that personal relationship with Christ. That's how come I felt that way. You know, we're not with the Father asking him those, those important questions. How do I love my wife the way you want me to? What do I need to do to be a better father? How do I raise my kids in the way that you want me to raise them? Not my way. How do I have an open conversation with my growing teenagers? How do I provide in the way that you want me to provide? How do I become the man you want me to be? You can only ask those questions if you spend in time with God. Some real questions for some real fathers. Questions that can only be answered by our Heavenly Father. Amen? Fathers, fathers who are followers of Christ have a father to go to, and that's our Heavenly Father. I can't stress that enough. He's waiting for us to extend our arms out to him. And say, Father God, I need you. Father God, I need your help. I need encouragement. I need your word. I'm not getting it nowhere else. Where can I go to get it? He says, come to me. I'll give you all that you need. But you got to come. We, some of us may not have an earthly father or a father example, an earthly example, but we have our heavenly father. Amen? Amen. So you ask me, what about the fathers that don't know Christ? What about the fathers that are not Christians? What about those fathers? What about the fathers that want to give up when stuff hits the fan? Want to run away, want to walk away, want to say, I'm done. What about those fathers? What about the fathers who don't have anyone to turn to when stuff gets real? Who's going to help and guide them? Who's going to help and guide them? Now, you may say, I'm a father. I can say, I'm a father, I'll help you. I'll help you. When you grow up, I'll help you. When you have that child, I'll help you. But wait, how can I be a father if I'm not going to the heavenly father to show you how to be a father? 
There's a disconnect there. I can't teach you or train you on something I'm not doing. Now, I'm not saying we don't have good advice, you know, from our lens of our experience. You know, every man in here could say, look, I've been through stuff. You know, encourage another man not to do something. You know, go there. Hey, you may not want to do that. You may want to rethink that. I mean, that's good advice, but that's not the kind of advice I'm talking about. I'm talking about the advice that, that God gives us, the kind of stuff that affects generations after generation. Proverbs 13.22 says, a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. Moral stability and goodness are left, meaning the difference between doing what's right and what's wrong. Hanging in there and leaving. Letting your yes be a yes and your no be a no. That's the kind of advice that we need to give the young fathers, the soon-to-be fathers. Amen? That's why it's so important for us to stay connected to our father. You know, the kind of advice that affect my son, your son, and the son outside these church walls. We have to be example for those sons. We got to be an example for David. You don't have a father, do you, brother? So I got to be that example. I got to step up and show him that I'm going to give him some godly advice. So when he's texting me, you know, I can greet him in the name of Jesus and say, how you doing, brother? What are you doing, brother? You got a job yet? How are you going to sustain and hold your family down? That's the kind of father he needs to be, a responsible one. Amen? So, in order to be a father that God has called us to be to our family, to our children, to the society that we live in today and other men, we have to get connected to Christ. So let's talk about this place where you can get connected. This place can be a man cave. I think Brother Ron has one. It could be your garage, which is my spot at times. It could be your Gethsemane, where Jesus went. It can be anywhere you need, anywhere, as long as you find a place to rest. It could be in your house. It could be in the park. Find your place to rest so you can hear from the Father. And I'm not talking about, this is something, I'm not talking about the couch and the remote control where you turn on the TV. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about what you hear from the TV. I'm talking about hearing from God. Amen. Not watching TV on what the TV is going to tell us how, what our future looks like, but asking God, what does my future look like? What does my future look like? That don't come from the TV. That comes from right here. That comes from connecting to other men. That comes from hanging out with other men that are in the word. Because if you say you're a Christian, we have to make the, fi- the Bible the final authority in our life. When you say that, that's what you're, essence, that's what you're saying. So if you don't want to make the Bible the final authority in your life, you can't say that. Think about it. If I say I'm a Christian, I am struggling, but I make the Bible the final authority in my life, then that means next week, tomorrow, I'm going to get it together. You know, I'm going to have brother pray for me. I'm going to step up and be a man. I'm going to father up. So watch it when you say you're a Christian, guys, because if you're a Christian, you've got to stay in your word. You know, my my place is when I get up in the morning, I go downstairs, I get into the word, you know, I read, you know, I get frustrated at times that I don't do it strategically. You know, God says, that's okay, you always got to do that first and do that second. And I'm always like that. I'm like, man, I got to get up and pray, I got to work out, I got to do this, got to do that. God says, you know, you don't have to. But my place is when I get up in the morning where I can talk to him and have a real conversation so he can check me before I go to work and have an attitude because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's my time. Sometimes it's on the golf course when I'm playing alone, of course, because it's hard from here when you got other guys around you playing golf. You know, golf brings the worst out in people, especially guys. But anyway, that, that's my place. My place is different from your place. Wherever that place is, find it. Get in it. Hear from the Lord. Amen. Turn with me to uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, please. Scripture is very clear about fathers, mothers, and all believers resting in Him. Matthew eleven twenty eight. I'm reading from an NLT translation. Anybody there? Amen. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, "Come to me." All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. 
The Amplified Version says, I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Jesus is saying those who, those who are weary, those fathers who are drained, who are spent from their fruitless toil, who are tired, who get up, in the early, to, or get up early to go to work, they're just drained. He's saying those fathers come to me. I will give you rest. I will take the load off of you. I will calm your heart. Jesus says, come to me, believe in me, trust me. I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you calmness. I will calm your heart. I will fresh your soul. Your soul. You'll have everything you need in me. When you prioritize your time, you find a place of rest, you realize he gives you all that you need. This message that I am speaking of tonight, today, excuse me, today, you know, was confirmed when Pastor Timothy spoke on uh, Mother's Day about women taking care of themselves, you know, women taking care of themselves, women taking time for themselves, you know, so they can hear the Father also. Well, the God told me, he said, he said, you need to tell the fathers to take some time off for self. You need to tell the fathers to spend some time with me because they're not. And I was like, Lord, how you know I'm not? It's just like God. He's so amazing because he gives you stuff that you need when you need it. So the Lord told me that. And it's funny because in preparing for this message and doing my due diligence online, you know, Pastor Lori would always say, come up with three, uh, re you know, three references, which works. I tell you, if you guys are studying, try that. But there was nothing on the web, the internet, that said anything about fathers resting, relaxing, getting refreshed, retooled, regrouped. Nothing. It was all you know, what to buy, what to get, you know, what to do, but nothing of that. So Lord knew when he gave it to me, if anyone needed it, was me. And, and since I've been up here for the past year and a half, all the messages I've spoken, they've been for me too. So they, they just ain't for y'all, they for me also, because I'm out here trying to be the best father I can be, the best man I can be, the best husband I can be, the best pastor I can be, the best employee I can be, the best person I can be. So this message ain't for just y'all, it's for me also. So when I speak, I'm speaking to all of us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. So when I read 1128, Matthew 1128, come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, I will give you rest. I read it as if Jesus is saying, come to me, invite me. I hope that you come to me. Come expecting, because what? I... Excuse me. I'm inviting fathers, those who are weary, tired, and drained, and have carries the weight of the world on their shoulders, trying to figure out what social media is saying, trying to be the best father, the best husband I can be. He says, come to me. Rest in me. That's how I read it. As he's saying, rest in me, son. You need me, son. I'm your father, son. Don't worry about what other fathers are out there doing. Worry about what I'm telling you to do, son. You know, I kind of imagine Jesus when he did that, you know, like a grandfather or grandmother, you know, grandbaby say, come here, baby, lay, lay here, everything gonna be all right. Because I remember growing up as a kid when I went over to my grandmother's and uh, I felt the shoulders of, my, of the weight of the world on my shoulders as a kid and I, stuff I didn't like my, my, what my mama was doing to me, granny would say, come here, baby. Come to me, everything will be okay. That's what I imagine Jesus saying. He's saying, come to me. Sons, come to me. I will give you rest. Everything's gonna be all right if you come to me. I can see Jesus doing that. So we have to go to him and rest. But like most of us, especially fathers, we're burning the candle on both ends of the candle. You know, we're out there hustling and bustling, trying to make things happen, you know, create something out of nothing. You know, maybe this is going to work. You know, we don't really know, but I'm the father. I can't, you know, ooh, 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 I can't make no mistake here. But we can't go on like that. We're going to burn out. We're going to get burned out. And, and particularly fathers and men, we've been raised to think if we're not raising our children right, if we're not doing something we're not being productive. If we're not always moving, we're not being productive. You know, then our manhood, fatherhood gets questioned because we ain't moving all the time. How do you think that makes us feel? You know, that makes us defensive. 
because you're not, you're not honoring me. You see what I'm doing here? You, you understand what I'm saying, fathers? Do you feel that way? Not you? Okay, it's all right. Okay. Well, other fathers, do you feel what I'm saying? Amen. It's pressure out there trying to be the best that we can be. But let me tell you, rest is something that we do. Going to that place of rest is something that we do. It's a place to go to. That's doing something. That's being productive. Let me tell you something. You know what I, let me, let me tell you. Rest means to re, be refreshed, at peace, eat, cease from activity. That's what rest means. So let me give you an example. All that I plan today, I may not get it done. You know, I have a set things, a list of things I'm gonna to do today. I may not get it done, but that's okay. You know why? Because I'm a rest. I'm gonna be still. Maybe I'm gonna spend a little time with my wife today. Maybe I'm gonna spend a little time with my son today, my daughter today. Maybe I'm just gonna stay home and rest. Read the Bible, pray, go to sleep. Rejuvenate myself. That's rest. Relax means to loosen up, release one grip, to be mild manner, to be chill. I added that one. <laughs> to be chill. Example, I have a list of 10 things to do. When I accomplish three, actually, the three come back the next day. Then next thing you know, I got another 10 things to do, which turns to 20. But you know what? That's okay. I may not get anything done on my list, my, ten, my list of 10 things to do today. But that's okay. I'm going to be chill. I'm going to relax. I'm going to stay still. I'm going to hear from God today. It's okay that I don't do my honey to do list. It's okay if I don't get the car tuned up. Because I'm going to be okay. I'm going to relax. That's what resting means. That's what relaxing means. Resting and relaxing and doing that is, is truly doing something. So don't let no one tell you that you're not. Because we, you, you're giving your body an opportunity to regroup. So that's doing something. Amen? Amen. So, fathers, in order to continue the calling on our lives, stop burning the candles at both ends, exhausting our minds, our bodies, and our souls, we have to focus and stay connected to Jesus. Bottom line. We got to go to him for our word, meditate on the word, pray, be still, so we can hear from our Father. It's, it, it's okay if you want to be still. Let me, let me quote a, a great metaphor this brother, you may know him, his name is Andre Gray. He said, if you're connected to the vine, everything will be just fine. You remember that? You remember that metaphor somebody used up here one day? What am I saying there? If we will enter into his, if we, if we will go to him, stay connected to him, we will get what we need from him. We will be rejuvenated through him. Amen? I Meaning if we stay connected to Jesus, he will give us the inner strength we need to fight the good fight. He will direct us when we have those tough questions on how to treat, run, and handle our family business, our family affairs, make those family decisions, how to communicate to our kids about those things that they're going through. You know, sometimes I talk to my daughter, and she, she's looking at me cross-eyed, like, what is he saying? Lord, help me communicate better to my daughter so she'd be sensitive to her daddy that, you know, he's hip, but he may not be that hip. You know, he may not be on Instagram all the time, but he got Instagram. You know, give me a break. You know, that's what I'm praying, that the Lord will soften her heart, that she's not, she's not moved by what's going on at school and her friends. So when it comes, she comes home, she can hear her parents. Because we, I mean, we're raising her, so we, I mean, we must be doing something right. You know, that's what I pray for. Because it's struggle, it's a struggle to talk to your teenagers today, I tell you. Amen? Grace, both hands up there. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys getting something out of this? Amen. Fathers, you getting something out of this? Okay. Amen. Amen. Where am I at? So remember, we have to, if we're connected to him, connected to the vine, if he's abiding in us, if we abide in him, he will abide in us. Amen. If we rest in him, he will rest in us. If we take the time to recognize we need help, prioritize our time with him, identify this place of rest, realize that we don't have all the answers, hear from him, and hear what he has to say on what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing, where we should go, where we shouldn't go. Turn with me to uh, John 15. We're going to read 1 through 5. 
And this is, uh, we read this before, but we're going to read it again. Because, again, when you read this, read it as if it's talking to you and that you have some fresh ears here. 15.1, I am the vine, and the Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me does not bear fruit. Any branch in me that does, does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away. He cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. You who are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you, dwell in me and I will dwell in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. So if we're not connected to him, we don't know what, he has, what calling he has on our life. Jesus is saying, if you're not connected to me, prioritizing time with me, resting in me, then how are you gonna bear fruit? How are you gonna bear the more richer, more excellent fruit if you're not connected to me, the vine? How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna raise your, your kids if you're not getting direction from me? How are you gonna be a better father if you're not getting direction from me? How are you gonna be a better husband if you're not getting direction from me? From me, from me, he says, from me. How are you gonna do that? We do it by staying connected to him, that's how. He tells us in scripture to stay connected to him. If we abide in him, he abides in us, amen? By staying connected to him, we are more apt to recognize the fruit that we're to bear, to hear from what he's calling us to do with our families, with this life that we have as fathers. And don't let anyone tell you there's anything soft or unmanly about going to a place where you can rest. If anything, that's more manly. That's more godly. Because you're saying, wait, I'm exhausted. I need to go back to the source. I'm tired. I need to go back to the source. There's nothing soft about that, guys. And the wives and ladies that understand that will encourage you to do just that, rest. You know, when we were hanging out with Jason last week, I went to lunch, I told the guys, I said, after, after we do the laundry love, I mean, after I finish lunch, I'm going to get a massage. And they said, what, you gonna get a mani-pedi too? I was like, look, for real, if I had the time, I would. <laughs> Straight up, I like taking care of myself. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Slowing down and taking time for self is not just for mothers and ladies, that's for all believers. Now, of course, the Bible doesn't say get a manicure, get a pedicure, do your hair, put some makeup on. No, of course not. Those are things that we choose to do, and some of those things I choose to do, to take care of myself, to take care of my body that's not my own body. Amen? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who gives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? Our body is not our own, y'all. You are not your own. You were bought with a price, purchased, paid for, made his own. So then honor God, bring glory to him in your body. Our body is not our own. So we have to take care of ourselves, guys. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to exercise. You know, however you struggle with that, you got to do something. You got to keep moving. You got to keep walking. You got to take time out for self to eat well. Watch what you're intaking. You know, watch what you're eating. Try to save your money on those fast food joints. You know, it's not adding to our health, our well being, if we're not eating well, if we're not watching the things that we're consuming. We strengthen our minds, body, and souls by staying connected to Him. That's what he means when he says take care of your body because it's not your own and you have it temporarily. So what he's giving you responsible over, be responsible for. First Timothy four says, the, for physical training is some value, useful for a little, but godliness 
It's one of my favorite scriptures. Spiritual training is useful and value in everything in every way, for it holds promise for the present life and also for the life which is to come. Notice in this verse, it doesn't, say, it doesn't negate the, the need for exercise. It doesn't say you shouldn't. He's saying that keep it in its proper order. Prioritize it correctly because godliness is greater, has greater value. The health of your body is more important than the health of your... The health of your, pod, your body is important, but not as important as the health of your soul. Because if you don't, what happens? You're no good to your wife. You're no good to your family. You go good to your kids. You're no good to God, the church, the community, or your job if you're always exhausted, tired, and don't have any energy. You'll be no good to anybody, including yourselves. So take the time to rest. The Bible speaks quietly, highly of resting. We see it throughout Scripture, starting in Genesis 2, if you would turn with me there. Genesis 2, 3 says, Thus the heavens and earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. He rested on the seventh day. We're not going to go there. I got another message for you. From all his work, which he has done, and, and God blessed, spoke good of the seventh day, set it apart as his own, and hallowed it. Because of it, God rested from all his work, which he had created and done. So what he's saying here is God worked, he created for six days, then he rested. Not because he was tired, because he's God. He can't be tired. But what he did, he set the standard for all mankind, for all fathers, for all mothers, for all believers. To what? To what? Rest. So if the Father, the creators of the heaven and the earth, the Omega, the Alpha and the Omega can rest, then we should be able to rest also. All of us. But today, particularly fathers. Psalms 122 says, if you turn there with me, I'm going a little fast, excuse me. Psalms 122 two says, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, excessive, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to, the, to his loved ones. He gives what to us? He gives what to us? God is not saying you can't wake up early. He's not saying you can't wake up early. He's not saying you can go to bed late. He's saying you can do whatever you want to do. But guess what? What he is saying is that there's no real advantage from arising up in the morning or staying up late at night worrying, having anxiety about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to go, what's going to happen tomorrow when tomorrow's not even promised. He's not saying that. What he is saying is saying, give me, I, excuse me, what he is saying is that come to me. I'll acknowledge me first and I'll put my blessings on it. Come to me and rest and I'll put my blessings on your day. That's how he will strengthen you. For he gives rest to the weary and all those who carry heavy burdens. Commentary says, everything is in, hand, in the hand of God. Our health, our strength, our clearness of mind, our success are all under his control. Although we rise early to tend to these things, he is still in control. Basically, no matter what you do, where you go, God is in control. No matter what you plan, he jolts our schedule because guess what? He wants to remind us that he is in control. Not us. We don't have that kind of power ability. He does. So we know, hold up. Guess what, y'all? I'm in control, not you. But we get all upset and, you know, bent out of shape, and that's not what he desires for us. He wants us to rest in him. He encourages rest. He desires for his people to rest. He wants us to rest and relax not get bent all out of shape. Now, that's easy to say, but very hard to do. You know, if the, wor the world is not going to stop if we take time off as men to rest, to rejuvenate ourselves in the Father. You know, I, I, th I think our wives would appreciate that because we'd probably be much nicer. I know when I act up, Timmy says, what, what you need to go, you need to get out the house, you need to go, you need to go play some golf. So there's nothing wrong with getting rest. So we, to get to this place of rest, God knew it was going to be difficult for us. And the reason it was going to be difficult for us because we are, we're not prone to trusting people. We're not prone to trusting God. 
You know, men can't, you know, I know for me it was a battle to trust my wife. I remember when I had my four-figure, five-figure uh, commission check, and I went home, I was, I didn't know if I wanted to tell her. We had just gotten married. I first made my healthy commission check, you know. I didn't think, I, I didn't want to tell her how much it was. I didn't want to give it to her because I didn't trust her, you know. My trust didn't grow for my wife until, until I started trusting God. Because God said, I gave you to her and she to me for a reason. Trust me. And look at us now going strong. We have our ups and downs, but now I trust her more than ever, than ever before. I trust her. So he knew we were going to have some trust issues. He knew that. So just like fathers, we always got to be in charge. We always have to give directions. You know, we, don't, we, we give directions. We don't take directions, right? I know I don't take directions very well. You know, it's like you roll in, you're going somewhere on a family trip, and you look at a map, and the wife tells you this is what the map says, and you say, no, I'm going the other way because I know an easier route. And the next thing you know, you're an hour or two behind, you know? I know my coworker, when I was, when I was kind of, she was asking me, what are you going to speak about? And I gave her just a tidbit of it. She's like, you going to talk about directions? You know, I, my husband don't even take directions. My, children, my family bags on me now when I try to cook because I don't read directions. I figure I can make my own measurements visually, and it still turns out okay. So we just don't take directions well. But that's okay, guys. That's okay. We got to take directions from our father and our wives. Amen? So we don't go down the wrong word, wrong uh, road, excuse me. So what am I saying here? I'm saying fathers have to relax, lessen your grip on your families, your careers, your job, and give it to God in faith. We have to have faith that he will take care of all things. Hebrews 3, 7 says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today I will, get, I will hear, today if you hear my voice, or today if you will hear his voice, what is he saying here? He's saying if you can't, you, if you're bogged down with everything that you're doing, if you're stressed out, you won't be able to hear my voice. You got to go to that place so you can hear and get guidance from me. Hebrews 4.11 says, let us therefore be zealous, exert ourselves and strive diligently, diligently into, the, into that rest of God to know and experience it for ourselves. We're to go after that rest that rest that is promised by Jesus to the weary and heavy laden, the place where we can hear from him, the place that he will ease, relieve, and refresh our souls. When you think about entering this place, it's a little spooky. Think about it. Where is this place that he's talking about? You know, I wonder, where is this place? You know, what does it feel like? What does it look like? What is it? I mean, have you, if you talk about rest, you know, where is this place? But I want to share with you something. We have a quote in our house and I started to realize that this place is real and it's tangible. And this quote says, peace. It starts off peace, and I'm sure some of us actually probably have it. But it says, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of all those things and still be calm in heart. To be calm in heart. It's not about the noise of your mind, the trouble that you're going through, or what you're experiencing, or the hard work you put, those hours that you're putting in. It's, where, it's about wherever you are in life, right now, just be still. Find that place to just be still no matter where you are. Amen? Being at a place, or at that, pe at that place where peace is, it will calm your heart, and it all comes from being in Christ. Trusting him, relying on him, giving up your ways, your thoughts, your pride, laying it down, laying it down and letting it go and saying, here, Father, I give my family to you. I give my life to you because I trust you. Fathers, I want you to say this after me. Say, here, Dad, I give you my life. I give you my wife. I give you my children. I give you my wants and my desires because I trust you. That's the kind of trust we need to have. Amen? Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. As I end, fathers, prioritize your time with him. Get in that place of rest so you can hear the calling on your life. Amen? Let's pray.